Hello there, this is Carol King, the developer of Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS. This video will be a continuation of a video about voiding checks and how to void checks, but we're going to do something that's a different situation and quote void a check in a different manner than using just the general screen for posting a void check. On the general screen for posting a void check, when you post it, it will make the void entry in your accounting books on the same day as the check was written. But there may be certain circumstances where you don't want that to happen. And I'm going to talk about how you handle that. In our case, even though I'm doing this in the year 2021, I'm going to play like we're at the end of the year 2015. And we have this very old outstanding check that was written in 2014 that has never cleared the bank. We don't want to have it be voided in 2014 because we close the books and have balance sheets of cash balances and all this other stuff. So we want to get it to where it shows up as void in 2015 at the end of the year when we're cleaning up our books. So I'm going to talk about that. The first thing I want to do is show you actually the company master. Over here there is a section for the controller or accountant with high level permission to set a current period. CHS does not control this. This is for you to put in some dates so that if people are entering accounting records outside of your current period, they either get warned that they are entering an entry outside of the current period. And if you've selected yes here to allow entries outside of current period, they can still make an entry outside of the period. But if you select no here, they cannot make an accounting entry outside. So I've selected no for now here on the company master. As your years change, you as the controller should watch this so that you are protecting from somebody going and doing something in a year that you have closed. So I just wanted to point that out because we're going to see that here. Now I'm pretending like I'm cleaning up the books at the end of the year and I'm trying to do a bank wreck. So I'm going to go to Cash Account Management Bank Recs. And I'm going to put in 1231-2015. And right at the moment, I'm not going to put, I don't have a bank statement, so I'm not putting in an ending balance. I'm just wanting to know what is in the account 1025. I'm working on that one for right now. So I've selected it. It's put that up here. And I'm going to open the uncleared list, getting ready to maybe do a bank rec. And what I notice is that there's a very old outstanding check to Dia's cleaning for $200. And I'd like to get that out of here so that it doesn't sit as an old outstanding. Apparently it's never going to be cashed. So what I'm going to do is show you how to take care of getting that reversed instead of actually using the void check entries. But let's pretend, let's go back to the home, and that we've gone here and we just thought we need to void it. So we've wrote down the date of that check, which is 0103. We saw that on the bank rec. 2014, 0103, 2014. And that we saw that the vendor was Dia's cleaning. So I'm just looking for that check on the list of checks that we've seen before. And watch what happens if I click to void this. I get a big message showing me the current period information. And it says, instead of voiding a check, you can post a negative payables check to the vendor for the amount of the check. Then post the negative check. The amount of a negative check will increase the balance in your bank account. So what I'd like to do is show you how to do that. If this said yes, allow outside, it would still let you go to the next window to void a check. But it says that on there. If you want to void a check on a different check than its original date, then do this procedure that I'm going to show you in this video. So what we need to do, since we can't void it because of the current period, is that we need to look at the detail so that we can decide how we're going to reverse this and we can look at the entries that this check paid originally that were dated 1213, but then the check was in 2014 when they paid it. So let's export this to PDF, open it with my Adobe Acrobat Reader. Hope you, hopefully you have your browser set up to open with your own reader. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that. I can see the job is DeGroot. I can see a cost code was used of 6010, etc. And that the GL was 1430. But since this is probably an old closed job, we're going to want to be sure we don't put it in that 1430, which is a work in progress account, because that job has probably been closed. 
but let's minimize it so we have this information handy to look at. I'm going to go home. I have already expanded to post new payables and charges. So we're going to post a new payable from scratch. And I already selected D as cleaning. I was here just a minute ago testing, So, you, but you can select that. And we want a job related bill because we'd like to reverse this out of that job. So let's do that. So we saw that the job that was used for the original entries was DeGroot. And we saw the cost code was 6010. If we look at that list of entries again, it was 6010. So we'll leave it there. It dropped in because that's what's connected to this vendor. But notice over here it says job is closed. It's trying to warn you and you can click on that. And it's saying you might want to use a cost of sales GL number and not another sort of number. Now we changed the job for this after we closed it for its default GL to drop in and payables to cost of sales because we knew we closed the job and we didn't want it to be posting to the work in progress account anymore. That's just a little tip. After you close a job out, you might want to go change the default GL number that drops in for payables to cost of sales so you don't get some lurking costs post and work in progress for a job that's been moved to cost of sales. So we're just going to put for an invoice number reverse and it was check number 3005. Just put that. We could spell the whole word reverse. And we are doing this, like I said, I'm in the year 2021, so that's what dropped in. But we're doing this on 1231-2015. We want that reversal in this year. It's warning me that you have entered a date that is several months old. If that's okay, go ahead, because I'm in the year 2015. And remember, I just went and temporarily have changed the current period to this, so it's not objecting to that date for that. So I'm going to say reverse check 3005 never cleared. Now what we want to do is just go ahead and do the whole amount of the check. We could do two lines if we wanted, but we don't really want to. We're just trying to get the 200 out of this 6010 cost code. So we're just going to put minus 200 right here. And what we want to do is submit this. When you do a minus accounts payable entry and you mark it as paid, it is going to increase the cash account. If you think about it, it's a negative check, which would add to the cash account instead of take away from it. Let's post the payment. It says you have selected to pay a negative amount. This is okay if you're posting refunds from vendors or if you're posting in order to void a previous check. The effect of this will be to increase the cash account like a deposit or a void check. So it's telling you about that. We want to be sure that we select, this is our default cash account we're using now, but that check was written out of check 1025, so be absolutely sure you pay attention to that because that's where you want it to increase the cash account, is that cash account. And we're doing this on 1231-2015. Again, I'll get warned about putting in a very, very old date. So let's put, what I'd suggest is the check number on this was 3005. I would suggest doing 3005 like 0 .2, just because. And let's post this check as paid. And if you knew what your cash balance was before I did that, this cash balance now would be $200 higher. So that check has been posted. What I'd like to show you, so that it's not in unpaid payables, I'd like to show you if we go back to Cash Accounts Management, which is where we were working on, we're looking at the checks that were outstanding at, as of 12-31-2015, I'd like to show you what shows up now. Notice that it says Deposits or Other Bank Credits. This $200 for us that we entered here shows up with that check number. And it's up here as deposits is a positive amount, and the minus 200 is down here. So what I'd like to do, since this is a zero effect and we don't care that it's not on the bank statement, we just want to get this one off of here as being outstanding, is I will check mark both of these as cleared on 12-31-2015, just to get them off of the uncleared list. And that basically takes care of that. So there are only two outstanding checks at the end of the year are these two that were written in December 2015. 
And, you know, it made it if you run a job cost report that the job costs were lowered by $200 if you were looking back at that old DeGroote job to see what was going on. It's just a check that never cleared. So that's basically how you handle it when it pops up and it tells you to post a reversing amount to accounts payable. That's what I mean. But you need to do it and pay attention to it and understand your accounting and get it reversed out of basically where you first originally posted. In our case, we were reversing it out of the original job cost for cleaning houses, I think, probably. So that's how you take care of, quote, voiding a check on a different date than the date that it was originally written. I hope that helps, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.